I'll be speaking this morning on name bent but not broken. Bent but not broken. If you see me this morning, like you realize that there's a difference between, as in there's a difference in me. I'm quite different from all of us gathered here. I wasn't really born like this. I got diagnosed with scoliosis at the age of 10. I was born like a normal child. I think I have some of my childhood pictures here. The slide. So, scoliosis didn't start until I was 10 years old. But before then, I've, been, I've always been a very sociable person. I was a very troublesome child. I, I was doing everything normally until when I got into the secondary school, Mata Christi, in Igede. That was when I got home. On a midterm break, around June 1998, and then my mom just noticed a slight bulge on my right spine. Then she called, Kofa, what is this on your spine? And so did you fall down? And, no, and that was how it began. But many of you would have felt, okay, baby, this is the end of the road for someone like me. You were not born that way. You've always met people of your, you've always seen your friends. Or everybody knows you, like, she's a very troublesome girl. She, she, has a, she can even abuse people and stuff like that. But now, you're looking different from other people. And your friends see you, and some are like, maybe she's the one or she's not. And so many friends dissociate themselves from you. And as a result, you would think, OK, maybe this is the end of the road. But I tell you, I didn't just get this bold. I didn't just find this happiness. Because as I am now, I least care about the way I look. I can do anything I want to do. I can go to places I want to go to without being shy. But it didn't just get this way. <laughs> when I gained admission into the university, especially before university, I, I did the pre-degree program. When, whenever I'm in class, I do sit at the back because I don't sit down. Sitting compresses me. It didn't just get this severe. At the age of 10, 11, it was just a gradual process. I was even thinking, OK, OK, well, the doctor diagnosed it to, to be scoliosis. I was like, scoliosis, maybe it's just a bulge that with time is going to get reduced, and I'll be normal. I've never seen anyone like this. I'll be the first person to have this condition. So I, the doctors were like, come every three months then at you stage. But I got discouraged because Anytime I go there, they will gather the student doctors and being a gro I was growing and, you know, poverty stage, they asked me to strip. Those guys will come around. Okay, what about this curvature? That's pain. They are using to analyze my spine without even considering the fact that this is a young lady, but you know, Nigeria sometimes some rules don't function here. So I just told my mom, I don't think I'll be coming back after this visit. They are here studying. Let me stay back at my own school and study because I've never had this. So I felt with time, maybe I'll outgrow it. So I was like that. My secondary school days, I saw people who were able to, they, they knew me like that. So they, they rallied around me. They helped me with some of the things I couldn't do. And when New Winters come, because we were the first set then, they saw this love my mates showed me. And they feel OK. She's just like every other person. And to even watch seeing it, I was a senior. And I was even going to classes. I was made the social prefect and at the same time, the choir mistress. And whenever, <laughs> and whenever I was on duty, I could even ask anybody to go out. But it, it really amazed me that throughout this period, nobody ever used this against me. I said, oh, that's why you look so different from us. So, they didn't really make me feel it. But when I stepped out of that school, I knew there was another world. Pre-degree in OAU was a, was a hell for me. There was a time I felt like, let me just go back home, maybe pick up something 
start selling something, you know, I don't know, I might not even live for long, so why am I wasting my time? But something kept pushing me. I was the first, I'm the first child of my parents, and I have four siblings behind me. So I felt if I should start with this, they might want to follow suit after all. Sister Kufotu didn't finish as well. So I kept on pushing it. Uh, no, I just must not this I just must not let them down. I have so many people looking up to me. And then when I get to class, I will be behind at the back so that I don't sit in front usually because I don't want to block people's views and I don't want to cause a form of distraction. They might be like, okay, she's a, she has the elevation there. The hips are sticking out. Why the lecturer is talking, somebody might even draw me and maybe the next thing I'll see is on the board. And they'll be like, that was the way she was sitting yesterday and stuff. So I felt, okay, let me sit at the back. But I realized that, that even if the whole hall is filled to the brim, I'll be the only one on my seat. So, so, so many times, girls most especially, they just look at you and they're like, gosh. Like, they even make you, you can always allow the person, the, the lady to leave. I said they should allow me to leave at least before you start discussing about the whole condition. When they are talking, they may like, oh, this, this, this lecture was very fine and maybe I didn't pass. And it was good. So I'll be like, God, please don't do this to me. I'll always cry. I wear big shirts to like try to cover up my posture. I call it school bag when I'm at home. I tell my, um, I tell my siblings I'm going down. I don't know why this school bag refuses to leave me. Can I just drop it at home? This monostrap will not just leave me. I try to bring pos positivity out of the situation that I find myself into. But when I got to part one, it was also hell. During the matriculation period, we had to register, do, some, so, ma do so many things, um, health center stuff. I noticed there are no arrangements made for people with challenges in the university. You, they, they assume, maybe they feel we shouldn't even go to school because there are no, no provisions made. So, another thing I realized then was self-pity came in. I lost all my self-confidence, and I would always be, be alone. I don't even want to have anything to do with the outside world. When people pass, I'm always like, oh God, they are looking at me, and I'm always so shy of myself. I feel like the ground should open. When I go into some places, maybe a function, children will see me and scream. Oh my God, and the parents, even adults sometimes make it so obvious that no, what is this? And stuff like that. Even on bikes, you, if you see me on bike, you, would, you think, and then bike men made it so terrible too. Whenever I approach them, the next person that is supposed to take me should come forward and you hear, no, I'm not going yet, I want to sleep. The next person will say, ah, no, 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 no. So I would like to, please, you good guys should please. Some other people might be coming behind me, they pick them immediately and, and I'll be there crying. I have lectures for one. This is if I need to get to, and I go an hour before my lectures because I breathe, I don't breathe normally, I have to get there to rest before time. But it was horrible. But despite this, I met a friend. She was on crutches. The day I met that friend, she made me realize that no matter, no matter, what, no matter the condition, we find ourselves. We should always bring our positivity out of it. Don't always, don't always put your mind on the negative aspect. I know we, we, we what doctors said. Some doctors even said that oh, she may not live up to 20, to 23 because her lungs will be squashed by then, her heart and everything will be so terrible that she would die. And I'll be like, I don't think about that. And look at me, I'm 26 and I'm still living. I try to I try to ponder more on those positive aspects of life and that has always kept me going. And what are these things? When people say, Oh, they offer me a seat and I go on my knees and they are like, Oh gosh, she's she's kneeling down. I look at them. You are there sitting. Can you kneel up to six hours? I can be on my knees for twenty four hours 
and I will not feel any, any, I won't feel uncomfortable. That is my own plus. And it's a disability to another person. So I, put, I try to like ponder on those aspects of my life which are, which are positive. Try to dwell more on the positive aspect and ig ignore distractions. Surround yourself with people who would help you to bring out the best in you. I've had friends before who bring other friends to my room just to come and see me. Like they would make signs to themselves like that's a girl and stuff. I had to dissociate myself from these friends because I know they would only bring more discomfort instead of bringing joy and happiness to one. You don't need a million friends. If I go anywhere, if you smile, I smile. And if you don't smile, it's you. It's your problem. I don't give... <laughs> Above all, there's something I would want us to always, I would live here with. Let us help others. There is happiness in helping others. I met a girl of, that looks more like me at a function. At the time, I first thought to myself, should I approach her? She, she's a primary school girl. I said, ah, if I should approach this girl, people will say, oh, association of disabled people, or maybe they're about to form a coup here. Yeah. So I thought to myself, okay. Then I told my sister that she, can she help me to move towards that girl and then just tell her that somebody like her, who looks like her, she should at least know that somebody, she's not alone. She was feeling isolated somewhere. Then I walked up to her. I snapped, I took picture with her. Then I, I asked about her school. And a few weeks later, while I was seven, I went to her school, I visited her that day. And I spoke with her headmistress and the teachers around that she's my friend here. The condition she has is scoliosis. And I lectured them about the condition. They shouldn't isolate her. She should mingle with her friends. And that day she was feeling, feeling so fly. Like we should make help others. Sometimes a smile can go a long way. Just tell me, oh, your glass, even if the glasses don't look good, say it. It looks good on you. And then... <laughs> And then you'll be making somebody happy. So I'm not really saying me in particular, but people out there. Help us to build a, a society where there is love. You don't have to be happy. Don't keep your happiness to yourself. Let it radiate within you and go around. Help people. A smile means it can go a long way. You don't have to necessarily go with gifts and stuff. Just help people around you and let us make a world big society. So I am bent, but though I'm not broken. <laughs> <laughs>